Blackwater Behemoth, a Priest Legendary. 8 mana, 8, 10 Beast with Colossal plus 1 and Lifesteal. And the thing you summon is Behemoth's Lure, a 1-4 that says, At the end of your turn, force a random enemy minion to attack the Blackwater Behemoth. So when you force your opponent's minion to attack the Behemoth, it's probably going to die because the Behemoth has 8 attack, and you're probably going to heal for 8 because the Behemoth has life seal. So it's kind of like a big removal thing that gives you a pretty big amount of healing. And uh, I think this card's just pretty good. It's a significant enough amount of healing that it can close out the game against like aggro decks and mid-range decks. Um, it is somewhat of a persistent threat. Uh, they can probably kill the lure, but then the behemoth after turn one can just attack itself. So you can still kill things and get life steal. So it's a persistent threat. And at 8 damage, even if you don't really care that much about the lifesteal, it's still a pretty significant removal card in a control matchup. So, yeah, I think the card is just pretty good. I don't know that Priest really has any ways to, like, abuse this card in particular. Like, their, uh, their resurrect thing right now, I think only works on, or the only way they have to resurrect only works on death rattle minions. Um... But yeah, it's just a pretty good card for them to have access to, I would say. Next up, a Hunter Legendary, Raj Najan. 2 mana, 2, 3 Naga. After you cast a spell, deal damage equal to its cost to the enemy hero. So uh, yeah, just another pretty good Legendary, I would say. Um, of course, there will be highlights with this card where you play it on turn 10 and then cast 8 mana worth of spells and it does 8 damage to the opponent. But I don't think it needs to be nearly that good. I think you can just kind of play this in Face Hunter. Face Hunter really just wants every piece of damage it can find. Even if you just pair it with something like Quick Shot, then 2 mana, 2, 3, deal 2 damage. You'd play that in an aggressive Hunter. Um, it's good with Aimed Shot, it's good with Piercing Shot, which I think is still in the game. Yeah, Forged in the Barrens. And uh, you even have the option of playing it early. If you, like, coin this out on turn one and then slap a Doggy Biscuit on it, they immediately take the two. It's going to be a 4-6 that's going to keep dealing damage every turn. It just seems like a really, really solid card. Um, I do think going forward, Aggressive Hunters might be a little bit less spell focused because they are losing um, adorable infestation demon companion and intrepid initiate all things that incentivize the use of spells quite a lot but uh i have to imagine this card just sees play in an aggressive hunter deck it needs very very little support to be good uh next up we have crush claw enforcer a neutral three mana three four naga with Battlecry, if you've cast a spell while holding this, draw a Naga. Uh, it seems like a pretty good card. 3 mana, 3, 4 draw card is good. It's a bit situational, and I do think that's just generally a drawback with these Naga cards. But, I mean, sometimes you're on the coin. This being turn 3, it's pretty easy to play some sort of 2 mana spell. I don't know, maybe Explosive Trap or something like that. But uh, I think it's relatively easy to activate. Bad top deck, of course. But powerful effect. And we have seen some really powerful Naga minions. Um, I know the Druid Legendary. Uh, Hedra, Hedra, the Heretic, whatever is a Naga. And uh, there are a couple other pretty good ones. The Hunter Legendary we just looked at is also a Naga, I believe. So yeah, those are powerful Naga minions that you might specifically want to search for. Or if you're just playing a general Naga deck, 3 mana 3 4 draw card is pretty good. Next we have another neutral Naga, Baba Naga. 4 mana 4 4 with Battle Cry. If you've cast a spell while holding this, deal 3 damage. Uh, 4 mana 4 4 deal 3 is a pretty solid minion. In the past, we have seen, uh, like, Life Drinker has seen play. Uh, is Knife Fender still in the game? That card saw a little bit of play. So yeah, 4 mana thing that does damage to the enemy hero has been pretty good. Um, this also has the flexibility of dealing damage to a minion, which is nice as well. 
kind of similar to a Circus Medic, maybe. But this you can actually play on Curve, unlike Circus Medic, which uh, had to be corrupted. So, yeah, just a powerful effect. Um, I'm not really totally sure it'll find a home, though. I did mention Life Drinker, and apparently, like, one of the reveal videos leaked that Life Drinker is likely to be in the core set. And I think if that's the case, something like an aggressive hunter deck, or just really any aggro deck, would probably favor the Life Drinker. It's just the same amount of damage, you're allowed to play it after a top deck, sometimes the heal is relevant. I think the Life Drinker is just going to be more consistent in that sort of deck. But uh, maybe in like more of a mid-range strategy, Babanaga would make a little bit more sense. But even then, those decks tend to be pretty focused on their synergies. And if you're not like doing a full-on Naga thing, then maybe Babanaga, even if it's a fine card, isn't quite the best synergy thing you could have. So, I don't know. Good card that may or may not find a home, but definitely very reasonable. Next, we have a Mage Spell, Gifts of Azshara. Two mana, draw a card. If you played a Naga while holding this, do it again. Well, we know that Mage plays Arcane Intellect for three mana. If there's a deck that plays Nagas, you'd probably play Arcane Intellect for two mana. So it's really just dependent on how good Ella or uh, how good Naga Mage is. Um, I haven't seen, so far the Naga stuff we've seen hasn't made me, like, super excited about Mage. About uh, Naga Mage in particular. But if it's a thing, this card is a thing. I don't think you're forcing Nagas to play this card. But it's a good support card. Uh, Mecha Shark, once again for Mage. 3 mana 4, 3 Mech. After you summon a Mech, deal 3 damage randomly split among all enemies. So, uh... New Flame Waker for Mage, I guess? But the reason Flame, Maker, Flame Waker was so good mostly was because of Sorcerer's Apprentice. Because uh, you could discount things to zero and play a bunch of them and then deal 20 damage in a turn. I think it's going to be pretty hard to do that with Mecha Shark unless they put Mech Warper back in the game. And uh, God, I hope they don't put Mech Warper back in the game. But even if they do that, it's a lot harder to spam minions than it is to spam spells, especially in Mage. So even with Mech Warper, this card might not be too insane. But uh, it is just a very solid card. Maybe I'm comparing it a bit too much to Flame Waker. Maybe you don't need a ton of procs for it to be good, because it is still a 3-mana 4-3. So uh, maybe if there's just like a good handful of solid 1-mana mechs, things like uh, Mecharu. And I think they're going to need to print some rather than just adding them to the core set. But if there's like five one mana mechs you could play in your deck, then this is just like a pretty good turn four play along with one of those mechs. Um, it does, of course, depend on whether or not you even want to play mech mage. They did get the colossal minion, Gaia, that also wants you to play mech stuff, but I wasn't super thrilled with that card. And this card isn't really doing a ton for me. But in Mech Mage, this is probably a good card. Uh, Flipper Friends, a Druid spell. Five mana, choose one, summon a 6-6 six, six Orca with Taunt, or 6-1-1 six, one, one Otters with Rush. So 6-6 six, six Taunt, or 6-1-1s one, with Rush. Um, it just seems pretty solid. Uh, five mana, 6-6 six, six Taunt is a decent card. Five mana for 6-1-1 one, one Rushers is a decent card. Has the upside of flexibility, so that's nice. Seems solid. Um, it's really hard to say what Druid is going to look like without Overgrowth. But if they're forced to play a bit more honest of a curve, then this card could be pretty fine. It's also pretty good fuel for the Legendary that uh, summons based on summons minions with cost equal to the spells you've played while holding it. Um, also has some synergy with Jerry Rig Carpenter, maybe. And uh, both Pathmaker and Pride Seeker also have pretty decent synergy with it if it comes down to that. So, uh, yeah, just a pretty solid card. Going to depend a lot on what Druid looks like, but I think it has a high enough power level to see play. Immortalized in Stone, Paladin Spell. 
7 mana, summon a 1, 2, 2, 4, and 4, 8 Sea Guardian with Taunt. And notably, this is a holy spell, so it's a pretty big discount for the Garden's Grace, I believe the thing was called. The thing that gives something plus 5, plus 5, and Divine Shield, but discounts itself whenever you spend mana on a holy spell. So yeah, big discount for that. And uh, also, maybe just a pretty solid card. It kind of reminds me of Giggling Inventor, where like the stuff you're getting isn't that good. But at a certain point when you just put so much taunt in play, it's just so annoying for the opponent to have to get through. And I think these three taunts do fulfill that role. And they also do a good job of dodging AoE because the big one is a 4-8, which is pretty hard to just kill straight up with a Flame Strike or something like that. So yeah, just a lot of taunts. Pretty decent stat distribution on the taunts. Pretty good discount as a holy spell. Uh, might just be a little bit too expensive to make the cut. Probably doesn't make too much sense in a more proactive Paladin deck, and maybe that is the direction that Paladin's going to want to go, since they have, like, powerful buff spells. Kind of just want to be sticking a minion and then throwing buffs onto it. But uh, if they want a defensive card on turn 7, I think this is a pretty solid defensive card. Next we have Seafloor Savior. 2 mana 2-2 two, two mech for Paladin. With battle cry Dredge, if it's a minion, give give it this minion's attack and health. So my understanding is that this is a buff. So if you hit like a Mister Smite, it'll be an eight seven instead of a six five. I originally read this as make it a two two, which would make this card god awful. So I'm assuming it's a buff. Uh, but yeah, it still might not be that good. Two mana two two kind of sucks. I don't put much value on Dredge, and I don't think Paladin has had too much Dredge synergy so far, other than their uh, Colossal Minion, which doesn't really need this as a support. And uh, yeah, you give the next thing plus two plus two. Just seems kind of unexciting, especially if you're not playing that thing next turn. Like, lose tempo now, gain tempo later, but it doesn't really even out that well. Um, this, of course, does have synergy with hand buff stuff. Uh, what hand buff stuff is still in standard? I guess we have jewel kit. And uh, probably some other hand buff stuff as well. So you can get some synergy out of it with that, but that's just like so slow. I don't know, pretty unimpressed with this card. It's going to take a lot for me to like a dredge minion. Twinbow Terror Coil Hunter Minion. 4 mana 4 4 Naga with Battle Cry. If you've cast a spell while holding this, your next spell casts twice. And notably, it doesn't say your next spell this turn, just your next spell. So uh, that's pretty sick. Um, maybe this could just go in a Face Hunter type deck, but I think it's a bit expensive. Although it is really insane if you get like Aim Shot to go with it. But doubling up on, I know these are rotating, but like Adorable Infestation or Demon Companion, something of that caliber, I don't think would be too exciting. But they are good activators for the battle cry. Maybe kind of a weird thing for this, because you need like different spells to enable and uh, benefit from it. I mean, not necessarily, but in practice, that's probably how it would play out. Um, one synergy I've seen with this card is with Piercing Shot. Apparently it targets the same thing twice, and the second time you target it, it's probably got zero health, so it just does six damage to face. That would certainly be pretty powerful with this card. Uh, but you can also go even bigger than that. You can copy, while well, we're losing Jewel of Nazoth. Does Hunter even keep any big spells that are relevant? I think all of their big spells are rotating. But in theory, if we got something like a Nagrand Slam, or... A uh, Jewel of Nazoth, something like that you could also copy with the Twinbow Terror Coil, which would be pretty sick. Actually, maybe a good candidate would be uh, Revive Pet. It's not that expensive, but it's a very high impact thing to do with your Twinbow Terror Coil. Uh, yeah, though, a lot of flexibility out of this card. Probably just too slow for a Face Hunter deck. Like, if you wanted to use this to copy a Quick Shot, you'd rather just play Life Drinker or Baba Naga, or something like that. But certainly a card with potential. 
Priest spell, switcheroo. Three mana, draw two minions, swap their stats. Uh, probably just a good card. We know that Mage plays Arcane Intellect. This is basically Arcane Intellect with a bit of a side effect. Uh, Rogue has played Shroud of Concealment. So three mana draw two is just pretty good. And I think the additional text on this card is mostly an upside. Like, obviously, sometimes it'll screw you, but overall it should break even, and sometimes it's going to allow a pretty big high roll. Not sure if there's, like, anything in particular you're hoping to high roll into, but if you just give big stats to any small minion, that's pretty good. Turn your Psychic Conjurer into an 8-8 or something along those lines. Just a lot of potential for this card. Um, it also has a lot of tutor potential. We talked about the big colossal minion earlier. Maybe you just don't play that many minions, so you can draw into that pretty consistently. Uh, maybe you can draw into Kazakasan pretty consistently. Or you can just have like a small handful of pretty good minions. Nothing too spectacular, but you can draw into something like Zyrella a little bit more consistently. Uh, Cutlass Courier for Rogue. 3 mana 2 5 Pirate. After your hero attacks, draw a pirate. So notably, you can just hero power on two, play this on three, and then draw a pirate. I don't really know how excited I am by that curve. Uh, spending two turns to play a 2-5 that draws a card is not, like, super exciting. But if the dagger's hitting good things, then uh, that's pretty good, I guess. We do have Blackwater Cutlass. Um, I don't know if we have... Yeah, we don't really have any other weapons that I'm excited to be using this, with this card, so... Mostly looking like the dagger, unless they print something else in this expansion. Um, but... Priest, or, uh, Rogue, rather... Is getting a bit of a pirate theme. They have, like, a big new pirate finisher. They have the Bootstrap Sunkeneer, the new Vile Spine Slayer thing is a pirate. So, maybe just drawing into their new powerful pirate cards is good enough for this to see play. At the moment, uh, Rogue doesn't really need help with card draw, but, oh god, Field Contact isn't even rotating. Uh, Swindle is rotating, though. Greyheart Sage is rotating. Cutting Class is rotating. So maybe something like the Cutlass Courier will be a welcome addition to the deck. But uh, I do think it's a bit expensive for what it does. Probably going to depend on how powerful specific pirates like Mr. Smite or... Uh, Pirate Admiral Hook Tusk end up being. Blackscale Brute, a warrior minion. 7 mana 5 6 Naga with Taunt and Battle Cry. If you have a weapon equipped, summon a 5 6 Naga with Rush. So, my initial impression of this card is that it's pretty good. It's just a lot of stats. Taunt and Rush are both relevant keywords. But. I have been burned in the past. I was so convinced that Morshawn Elite was going to be an insane card. And relative to their mana costs, I think they're both pretty equally overstated. So I'm a little bit skeptical of this card. Uh, but I will say the Black Scale Brute, it just has more numbers on it, which makes it scale better into the late game, obviously. It's not as vulnerable to AoE with a little bit more health. And I think Taunt plus Rush is better than Taunt plus Taunt. It's just a little bit more flexible. So, like, maybe this card could see play. Especially if Warrior has some sort of Naga support. And if Morshawn Elite had never been printed, I would be like, Wow, this card is so good. But based on a past card, I just can't imagine this card being that impactful. Although, maybe the game will be weaker this expansion than it was back in Forged in the Barrens? I don't know. Next up, we have Multi-Strike for Demon Hunter. One mana Fell Spell. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. They may attack an additional enemy minion. Well, obviously if this didn't say enemy minion, it would be really sick. But it is enemy minions only, which is a bit underwhelming. I don't necessarily love attacking enemy minions. But, uh... Maybe if Eldrachi Warblade sticks around, then uh, this is probably a little bit better of an effect. Um, it, it does also just give your hero plus two attack or one mana. 
So it's just damage, and it's damage that has synergy with Jace. So that could be a pretty fine reason to play it. Not much to say about this card at the moment, really. Um, I think in a Jace deck, you're probably pretty happy to play this. Otherwise, you're probably not too happy to play it. But maybe if we're in a meta where there's a lot of flame imps running around, then this is just an efficient answer to a particular aggro meta. Next, we have Scalding Geyser, a fire spell for Shaman. One mana, deal two damage, dredge. Uh, I think this card is good. One mana, deal two damage. We've seen that card in multiple classes in the past. It has dredge for essentially no cost, which is what I think dredge is about valued at. And it is a fire spell, which Shaman cares about because of Multicaster. And I don't see any reason that they wouldn't want to continue playing Multicaster going forward. I think their fire spell, their fire spell pool, is like Perpetual Flame. Oh, Perpetual Flame is actually not rotating, I thought it was. But, I mean, this card is better for activating Perpetual Flame, or activating Multicaster than Perpetual Flame is. Uh, yeah, just a very simple, solid card. I don't think Shaman particularly cares about the dredge at the moment, but it's nice to have when it costs zero mana. Uh, there is some cool, like, spell damage synergy coming up for this in the future, so maybe it's just a really good burn card, because it can go face, and Shaman does like damage that can go face. But uh, even without being in a face deck, it's just pretty good. I guess it also has some synergy with Wind Chill. If you're casting both of them anyway, pick the card to put on top of your deck and then draw it. That's a two mana play for both of those. Seems very solid. Next up we have Piranha Swarmer. One mana, one one beast with Rush. After you summon a Piranha Swarmer, gain plus one attack. Um, I mean, I don't really know what we're supposed to be doing with this card. In theory, you summon a bunch of them, and then they get really big. But they have one health, and they trade into minions. So that just doesn't really seem like much of a payoff for stockpiling these or copying them or whatever. And then you just, like, get to trade into minions. I don't think we've seen anything that uh, makes this seem like a cool deck. But maybe if there's something that has synergy with rush minions, it could be cool. I don't know. I don't really get it. Uh, Piranha Poacher. This one is shaman specific. Three mana, two five Murloc. At the start, at the end of your turn, add a one one Piranha Swarmer to your hand. So Piranha Swarmer is the thing we just saw. Uh, you can get a bunch of them with Piranha Poacher, and then you stockpile them in your hand, and they clear the board. That's cute, I guess. Once again, I just don't really get it. Uh, maybe this card sees play in Murloc Shaman, because it's a 3-mana 2-5 Murloc. But, uh, not super excited about that. Maybe they'll show some other cards that make this card make sense. But, at the moment, I'm not too thrilled with it. And finally, we have Excavation Specialist, Neutral Minion. 4-mana 3-6 with Battlecry Dredge. Reduce its cost by one. Uh, pretty sure this is just not a good card. I don't place much value in Dredge. This card is maybe fairly statted, maybe a little understated. Uh, you can reduce the cost of it by one, so like maybe you play this on turn four and curve into some really sick six mana card that you can play on turn five before you're supposed to be able to play it. But, I mean, that's just so specific. Even in that case, I don't know if it's worth playing a 4-mana 3-6. It just seems like a pretty bad card, unless there is some sort of very specific synergy with it. Something that you really need to get a discount on that you can't otherwise. 